Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back. So this time around, we're going to build a couple of alcohol burgers and explore why your day gets so long when things go sideways. All right, guys, stick with me. Should be fun. Okay, got a couple of spicy honey jars here. They're really small. We're going to do a bit of an experiment um, with these. I need a heat source, and I'm going to make sort of an alcohol burner, a little alcohol stove. And I'm drilling a hole, well, close to the center of this lid, eighth inch, because I'm going to use a piece of eighth inch brass tubing to put through that and build our burner from. So I'm going to do a little bit of a different take. I need a heat source, and I don't need to cook food or any of that good stuff. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation and sort of build a half burner, you might say. You'll see it develop as it moves along here. There we go. That fits in the hole nice. It's got some protrusions where the drill bit kind of pushed the metal up. So we tap those flat and that gives us a little more snug fit. All right. So Gorilla Tape. And I'm going to cover the ends of this tube with that so that I can fill it up with uh, 1080 powdered steel. You can use sand or just about anything and it keeps the integrity of the shape as you're bending and, and uh, manipulating. And we're going to be curling one end of this up. And that powder will keep the uh, tube from collapsing as we're bending it pinching that kind of thing so the aluminum can I'm uh, building myself a little funnel here because I have nothing that goes down to eighth inch or below and I need to get that powdered steel into that bronze tube so we roll it up diagonally really tight so we have a fine tip on that and a piece of Gorilla tape all right so what I discovered here is uh, I'm reaming out the end where I used a tubing cutter on it to open it up a little bit. And what I discovered here was putting that little piece of tape on the end. I should have waited until I got it through the funnel. It was easier to push it through the funnel than it was to stick the funnel in the end of the tube. There we go. So we'll get our uh, piece of tape back on the bottom. And now we'll keep our powdered steel in there while we're doing this and the reason we're going with an eighth inch typically you see these things made out of you know, a quarter inch copper that kind of thing I need something small it needs to fit into a space and I just wanted to see what kind of a flame I could get out of an eighth inch tube and this is my 1084 powdered steel doesn't take much to fill that tube up you tap it make sure it's Pull from one end to the other. There we go. And we're going to build more than one of these. So we'll keep our funnel and all the good stuff that we've got there. All right, that's our tube. It's our little bending wrench. And this little wrench, um, it's painted white so I can find it and separate it from all the other wrenches. But I rounded over the jaws on this for bending all sorts of things in the past. And it works really, really well for this. And we just keep going. We're going to turn this into sort of a, uh, a question mark shape, you might say. Sort of a, um, a Dr. Seuss looking thing. A scroll. And what we'll end up doing is at the end of that typically what you would do is um, go all the way around and have two legs going down into the jar we're going to have one leg with a wick going down into the jar and the other end of it is going to be partially open you'll see what we do here in a minute on that with that curl on there that's a whole lot easier to hold on to when we cut it <laughs> all right and again reaming out the end of that tube because the tubing cutter sort of 
collapses the tube in the area that it cuts and you want it open. So I'll knock all the uh, powdered steel out of it. And we're good to go. All right. We're going to get this burner into the lid of the jar and we're going to leave it on the jar. There's a little rubber seal inside the uh, lid and we're going to just solder this in place. We're going to clean the steel up and the rounds up. And when I solder it, that uh, seal has a chance of melting and distorting. But if I leave it on the jar, the jar should act like a heat sink and help to maintain its shape. And we're going to keep very little heat on this for a very short period of time. We just need to seal it up and hold it in place. We could use JB Weld or something like that, but I just like soldering a lot more. It's pretty easy to do. It's pretty quick. On the one side, the other side, and you can see the smoke inside that jar. That was a little bit of that uh, rubber burning off the inside. But the seal itself remained intact for the lid. So I'm going to push a wire through here. And this wick that I'm using is just a real thin strip of an old shop rag. It's a torn up t-shirt that uh, I just ripped off. We'll pull that all the way through. And we'll clip it off real close to the end of that burner. I'm pushing the wick back down inside because we're going to take a pair of pliers and get that nice and clean. Take a pair of pliers and we're going to smash that in down into a very small slot and reduce the amount of uh, gas that can escape there. And if it's too much, we can open it back up. If it's too little, we can... Uh, Squish it a little bit further. All right. We'll get some fuel in this thing. And we'll see how she goes. So the reason I'm building this is, like I said, I need a heat source. And that particular heat source is for a little uh, art project thing that I did years and years ago. And I never had a really good heat source for it. But uh, the art project has... Now well, you'll see it, but it uh, <laughs> has something to do with um, an imaginary time travel situation. There we go. So we got a little uh, piece of cloth under there and heated it up and it is burning. You can see it there. Turn the lights off a little bit so you can see it. These things burn or really, really clean, and the flame is so blue that you can barely see it, but there it is from another angle. And it's a pretty small flame. It'll get a little bit bigger as it goes, so while that's sitting over in the corner heating, you can see it in the background, I went ahead and set about making one with a uh, quarter-inch piece of copper in it, so we get a little bit bigger flame. Same process, same thing um, all the way around, just a bigger piece of copper and that soldered on there really nicely and we'll get that on the jar and you can see that flame is much much larger it's uh there we go we'll get both of them going and we had a little piece of cloth under there that's why the flame was a little yellow but both of those are burning and the large one is putting out quite a nice flame you can see them there so I have an idea for the smaller one, um, a project I'm going to do with that. So I'm glad I built that one and it worked out really well. And this guy is going to go right under here. This is a Stirling engine, a walking beam Stirling engine that I built uh, 15 years ago. Okay, guys, so little machine here that we're powering with this alcohol burner is a Stirling engine. And I built it from scrap, like, you know, usual, around here at Big Dog Forge. And I went to the uh, junk store, Goodwill, I think, and picked up a bunch of brass things off their shelf. They were like a buck a piece. And like I said, this was about 16 years ago or so. And it was 
a sort of an eye-catching thing. My wife owned a steampunk-themed tea shop back in the day, and uh, I built several of these, and they would sit around the store and just run and, and you know, just kind of a conversation piece. You can see the dust and dirt all over this thing. It's been sitting forever, and I wanted to get it fired up, and I needed some sort of heat source and candles just aren't quite enough to power this so a little alcohol burner will work well so anyway i've got a uh, future project where i plan on building another one of these and i think i'll turn that into a video if you've noticed that dial says cubic days this little machine has to do with um three-dimensional time and this is not based on Fairbanks University, uh, Gunter Collecticus, I think his name was, who wrote the paper on three-dimensional time recently. Now, I was 16 years before him. And besides, who are you going to listen to, me or a real scientist from a university? Come on. <laughs> okay, there you go, guys. So thanks for stopping by Big Dog Forge. Appreciate it. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.